Okay, so today we are going to talk about uh, layout strategies. Okay. I think we have already, last week we talked about uh, what we call location. Remember location? Okay, so, so, so once we have a location, we now uh, have to think about our layout strategies. Of course, it's not only location, uh, layout also depends on the product, okay? Um, in, in industrial engineering, there is one specific subject on facility layout. So, you know, when I did my undergraduate, I have to study layout one course, one subject. So this is only one chapter, <laughs> one chapter. So I only have a little thing to cover for you so that you have a, you have a general view of what, uh, you know, layout is and how important layout is. Many companies struggle because they don't have long-term vision about uh, layout. They don't have strategies, basically. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, the uh, the book gives McDonald's as an example of layout. Uh, you know, for service organization. But I'll giving I'll be giving you some examples from from uh, manufacturing. Okay, manufacturing because probably you know you have not seen manufacturing or uh, what they call engineering based layout okay but it covers all okay it covers i'm not going to i'm not going to go detail on you know things like office layout okay i'll just run uh, briefly describe to them uh, describe them to you so the strategic importance of layout types of layout uh, that you have office layout you have retail layout okay these are the types of layout okay warehousing and storage you still need facility okay so basically it's facilities when you are operating uh, you know we are doing operations banks banks also need a layout you know government office also need layout warehouse and storage also need uh, design i think which i showed you uh, last week about the or two weeks back eh? the uh, asrs remember automatic storage and retrieval system of a company warehouse you know they built a big huge transport you know material handling system so that is also considered as a type of layout and you have fixed position fixed position uh, for certain products you cannot let the product flow you know like uh, you, you, you make uh, Bottle drinks, okay, that is considered as product layout. But in a fixed position, aeroplanes, you make aeroplanes, it's a fixed position layout. Okay, you bring all the materials or the men to the product. You don't bring the product, you know, make it into production line uh, long. They have one or two, you know, stages, three stages. Process oriented layout. And the idea of work cells, okay, work cell. I have a small video on this work cell. Okay, so work cell, which actually, um, you know, used in manufacturing. Okay, it's manufacturing. They use uh, uh, this work cell concept within the within the layout. And repetitive and product oriented layout. You have seen this Harley Davidson. I've shown you Harley Davidson. You know, we talk about. Um, process layout and product product layout. Eh? That is product layout. So, um, so we are going to discuss important issues in not only office layout and all other layout. Uh, we'll def uh, not only office. Eh? Okay, all type of layouts. All okay, all type of layouts. Objectives of not only retail but all others as well. Because in general, what is the objective of a good layout? Good layout means you have good flow. That's all. Very good flow. I mean, material come in, you can process it, and you will go out of the um, facility, and you can deliver it. Okay, so in out is very important because that will determine efficiency and productivity. Okay, uh, we'll look at warehouse management, uh, modern warehouse management concept of uh, automatic storage and retrieval system (ASRS) automatic storage retrieval system cross docking between uh, especially a delivery of materials and then uh, immediately being uh, sorted and uh, transport out especially in the pandemic and you need to have this good warehouse management uh, system 
uh, and random stocking of the stock. So, and then uh, we look at fifth position layout, uh, when, when you use that, okay? Uh, so basically layout depends on the process, uh, the product uh, that you are going to produce. Eh? And then uh, how are you going to achieve a good process oriented, firstly layout, define work cell, define product oriented. Uh, if we have time, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you balance production flow in a repetitive or product-oriented facility. There is a little bit of calculation, actually, of doing uh, balance production flow. Okay, It's uh, widely used in assembly plan. Uh, you know, you want to determine the flow. So the book gives an example of McDonald's. You no, know, they do a lot of innovations. And most of the innovations, um, of course, they have innovation in... Uh, you know, adding breakfast to the menu. So this menu related, product related. So this product. Indoor seating, that is related to layout. drive through layout. Additional play areas, layout. Redesign, layout. Service, self-service kiosks. And now they have three separate dining sections. So these are all, you know, redesigning and, you know, re-layout. But of course, McDonald's can do it because it is not like factory making cars. You know, if you do this every year, making cars, you change the facility, um, you know, it will cost a lot of money, okay? But, uh, you know, maybe McDonald's is uh, not that high cost to actually, uh, you know, change layout, which attract customers for fast service, eh, for restaurants and so on. So this is a new layout of, <clears throat> you know, McDonald's, they keep on adding. Okay? The seventh major innovation is redesigning all 30,000 outlets around the world, three separate dining areas, uh, linger zone with comfortable chairs, grab and go zone. Basically, it's trying to retain customers and also, you know, they look uh, facility layout as a source of competitive advantage. Excuse me, sorry. So facility layout is competitive advantage. Right. So what is the strategic importance of layout decisions? So you want to have, uh, you want to, uh, the objective of uh, uh, strat uh, layout strategy is to develop an effective and efficient layout. So effective, efficient, Arrangement, okay. So when you talk about layout, it's arrangement. Arrangement of all your departments that will meet the company's competitive requirements. Okay. So when you talk about layout, you are talking about space, high utilization of space. If the you know you are you rent a facility, right? You rent, you pay for every square foot. Remember, when you buy a factory, you are actually investing in every square inch, not square foot, eh? square inch, or every square centimeter, for that matter. You understand? Every square centimeter of space, floor area, and height is paid. Okay? You are going to, that's why you need to have high utilization. Okay? High utilization space, equipment, people. So that, you know, not only that, when you think about layout, how do you improve flow of information? That's why in Toyota, they have undone lights because, you know, in the production line, you see an undone light, red, yellow, green. Have you heard of undone lights? Kita kutu arimaska? Undone lights? Yes. Uh, lights, uh, three, three lights, one stop, one is... Uh, investigating and trying to go green go no problem machine is running so manager go to the production line if i'm a manager i go to the production line i can see the uh, flow of materials and people so this is the information i immediately see the information if a factory if you go to the factory and uh, everything is blocking you know you cannot see the flow so, so that's why it is, uh, uh, 
you know you are you will understand this when you go to a factory <laughs> if you don't if you don't go to a factory you won't be able to understand this anyway flow of information in, you know that that's why the good layout will improve flow of information improve employee morale because a good layout worker will feel very comfortable to work and safer working conditions okay so so all this will you know help to improve morale moral me motivation and also improve customer client impression and a good you know a layout will always think about flexibility flexibility mean is the facility designed for expansion for example expansion expansion means you can actually uh, you know if there is a added capacity needed you can extend uh, the factory area and add in a new storage for example a new production line for example okay or even the existing production line can you remove and put in the new uh, for a production line okay so flexibility is also something that must be put into consideration so many times of layout you have office retail you know all these are uh, layouts that you can see exist in all you know um, all kinds of operations okay all kind of operation even airport is also layout okay it's been it's designed okay it's designed it's not you don't simply you know uh, make it eh? right office layout i'm not going to go too much on this okay so the important is in terms of the position you put the workers and then the equipment that is needed where you're going to actually uh, you know uh, put the photocopy machine you no know, uh, where the stationaries are the papers and so on okay so what is is important is that you provide for movement of information and good communication i always think office layout must increase motivation okay of workers because you don't want to have you know office is not home okay one thing office is not home office is where you work and then i like japanese style open office systems Japanese is open office system. So they don't have, now in Malaysia, there is a barrier. There's a block between one uh, table and another table. So, so you see uh, a very, a very, you know, it is a different culture any, anyway. Okay. So you see, uh, it's important for uh, communication. Okay. For office, it's good, it's important to. Consider communication, ease of communication. Detail layout, allocate shelf space. Okay, you go to supermarkets, you see, you no, know, there are ways of designing. Uh, there is a software also. <laughs> there is software to design uh, uh, what you call the uh, shelf space, uh, retail layout. Uh, warehouse la layout uh, will try to um, trade off okay well trade off between space and material handling because warehouse you need a lot of material handling you need a uh, forklift you need lifters you need uh, you know uh, pallets to move so warehouse is uh, it's a bit expensive okay if you don't design it properly it's going to be very expensive warehouse i shown you last week already a warehouse and fixed position layout addresses large bulky items such as ships, even making buildings. Okay, when you construction is considered as fixed position layout. Okay, uh, and process oriented layout, which deals with low volume, high variety production, uh, also called job shop. Okay, uh, there's another one is actually repetitive. Uh, okay, there is a product or product oriented layout, and work cell layout. So I, will show, I will show you a video on this. It arranged machines uh, and equipment that focus on production of single product or group of related products. So it's a, it's a cell. Okay? When you say cell, it's, a, it's like this. Okay? You have machines here, machines here, and a worker, worker will you know, work around this. So he start from this first and then move on. So this is a cell. It's a cell, okay? It's a cell layout. You arrange the equipment and the parts because it's not only the machine, but also the parts. 
that you need to do the work on. Okay, work cell layout. Right. Um, okay, so all, all these uh, types of layout, depending on the uh, you know strategy. So there are objectives that I have, think I've shown just now, right? Retail to expose customer to high value item office so you want to locate workers and equipment close to each other so that there is a contact a warehouse you need to balance low cost storage you can see all these examples you can you know google and find out uh, you know these um, the objectives and all the examples okay project layout i will show you after this and uh, a job shop is hospital is job shop hospital because you have many kinds of departments, okay, where you have to do different, you know, different kind of treatments. Uh, job shop. Another example of job shop is actually when you send your car for repair in a service workshop. You know, workshops you send for repair. That is job shop also, or even maintenance shop is also job shop, uh, right? So it is actually process oriented. You work on one process or the machines that is actually arranged in one. Uh, they are grouped together. For example, welding machines in one area, and then uh, cutting machine in one area, uh, and so on. Drill. Right? So it actually de uh, depend on the process. They group it together. Okay. Uh, and I think you've seen repetitive. Continuous product like uh, assembly plants, Harley Davidson, Sony TV, you know, uh, Toyota production line is actually uh, repetitive as well. Remember, repetitive product you make similar, you know, just one product along many uh, many steps. Okay, so this is where you actually need to balance the balance the balance the line according to the stages okay so we say equalize the task time at each workstation if you don't have same working task time then you will have bottlenecks in the steps okay in the stages okay other thing that is uh, considered a good layout okay will also consider material handling equipment because there, there are bulky parts, for example, you need to move it to the, to the production line, or you need to move it to the, um, what do you call, um, to the final product area, like aeroplane, right? So you need to actually have big material handling system, cranes, and so on sometimes. Yeah. And you need to think about capacity and space requirements. Um, you know, if you need to have a big volume, then your factory will be bigger, right? You know, depends on like I mentioned last week. You know, you know, uh, hundred thousand facility car manufacturing versus a ten thousand facility uh, capacity, ten thousand per year, for example, versus hundred thousand. So of course, the factory producing ten thousand is smaller. You don't have to big have a big factory to produce. You know, very small volume. So capacity and space requirements, environment and ethics. Uh, flow of information I mentioned already just now. Okay. And normally in layout, uh, factory especially, we consider the cost of moving between various work areas. For example, I need to move material from the welding shop to painting shop, for example. So there is a cost of moving. It depends on the material handling as well as, you know, frequency of movement. Okay, especially in process layout, especially in process layout. But repetitive, it's, uh, you know, it's just uh, flowing. Eh? Or even product, like we saw the uh, company that produces this uh, bottle, eh? bottle drinks, right? Okay, office layouts, uh, you know, you're grouping the workers. Um, okay, this is, uh, this is, not, not. Uh, no, I'm not saying it's not important. Okay, it's uh, it's very clear. Okay, uh, office layout. The movement information is main, main, uh, main distinction. Okay, of course, today in COVID, there is uh, no more office. Office at home. Work from home. Today, there is a concept of um, hybrid working. After COVID, 
there is um, some companies are allowing employees to work from home as well as office. So it's a hybrid uh, working environment. Okay, uh, but of course there are problems. For example, uh, in home, I think there is no office. <laughs> like you are staying at home, there is no office. There's no. I mean, uh, it's just uh, your own bedroom. <laughs> for example. Okay. Anyway. Uh, you need to, uh, I mean, companies need to rethink about office layout in the future, okay? And also because of, it's a state of flux due to frequent technology changes because, you know, like previously there was no, uh, there was telephone, the big telephones. And there were fax machines. I mean, because of at that time, you need fax machine, you need telephone, you need, you know, all these uh, gadgets. Today, or you need big computers, but now all the computers are very small. It's tablet, it's that's laptop. So you don't have, uh, you, don't, you have smaller, right? and you, you need Wi Fi. You need this uh, cable, cabling for Wi Fi. You need cabling for internet. 20 years ago, there was no cabling for internet in office. So, you, so there are changes. Eh? And I do not know 5G, what will happen to offices? You know, with advancement of 5G and also digitalization. Uh, so it will office office condition will change. Of course, layout, eh? basically layout. A tool that can be used to see the relationship between office areas, but this was originally originally used in manufacturing, okay, factory layout. But this is just a tool. It is called relationship chart, which shows which shows the closeness of one or area to another area. For example, what is the closeness rating, we call it rating, between, uh, let's say, the central files. This is what this was done by an analyst, analyst. Someone have actually done the analysis and given the ratings. For example, you know, there is, uh, it says X between sales area and central files. So X mean, not desirable. So don't want, they don't want to put, for example, you know, so this is the office. How many? Nine. Okay, there are nine places. So this is a central file. So what it does is that the central, the sales area cannot be near. It can be here. Uh, so that's what it means. Eh? It means that it should be far away. X far away. Okay, let's see another X. X, accounting and sales area. Okay, so uh, okay, what about accounting and CF? CF and accounting. Ah, okay, so because this is A and this is X, so central file can be beside accounting. Okay, so this is this is the, the, the relationship chart. Of course, it's more than this, but it's just showing that it is absolutely necessary to be close together. So when we put the department, when you say close together, that means it is just beside each other. So uh, X, X is uh, far, far away. <laughs> but but I'm, not, I'm not going to go to the detail. There is more than this. Okay, there's more than this analysis. But basically, that's the concept. So that you arrange all these so-called departments or areas, in this case, your office, okay, areas in the office, where you should put this. Huh? Of course, there is a software actually, you can put it in a software and the software will arrange, for example, this is your, uh, uh, C, CEO will be a secretary. Okay, so maybe CEO here, then the secretary here, I don't know. And then, uh, so that's, that's the, the, the whole idea. The whole concept is to see the relationship between, you know, two departments, between the various departments. Okay, so that's uh, the whole concept of relationship chart. Now, other things uh, about office layout is the uh, 
physical and social aspect of proximity, privacy, and permission, and you know the use of IT. And uh, I mean, in office, the spaces are uh, all these. Uh, you know, there are there is a need for dynamic needs for space and services. Meaning, there will be sometimes you need to actually move around. Okay, and uh, change. Okay, supermarket retail layout, the objective is to maximize profitability per square foot of floor space uh, and also height, okay? Because sales and prof profitability will uh, vary directly with uh, customer exposure, especially high value item. That's why you see at the checkout counter, you know, they put in not only uh, high value, but also they call it, um, you know, um, instantly, instantaneous. Okay, the, the, the for example, kids, children, they put the chocolate at the checkout counter because the children will able to see the uh, the the you know the chocolates or the you know sweets at eye level. You know, kids is this height. They put the chocolate same height, same height as the children. They don't put the chocolate high. They cannot. The children will see these sweets. Okay, so that's that's uh, the way that actually they actually they they try to you know uh, design layout and also allocate uh, allocate the products. Okay, so they locate locate high draw item around the periphery of the store, uh, and they pay for this. You know, products. Manufacturers pay for the location in which it is actually um, high uh, high draw items, very easily visible and immediately catch the attention of customer. Immediately catch the attention. Okay, so that's why they use prominent location for high impulse and high margin item. Okay, uh, the concept of the other thing like distribute power item to aisles and and use an aisle location so there is there is a way of actually uh, locating supermarket products okay and it's quite common you see a lot of supermarket is uh, you know you go inside the supermarket the first area is the vegetables and the fruits area and then you go to the next area the bakery and so on okay it's a very established, very established. So this is a store layout, a, a typical supermarket layout. Okay. So you, uh, where is the entrance? I cannot see the entrance. There is no entrance. Okay. Do you know where the entrance is? Uh, probably here. It looks like an entrance here. Okay. So dairy. All right. Anyway. This is, uh, it, you know, you can design this and you can actually uh, make sure the flow. Sometimes when you go to supermarket, you know, there are supermarkets that you like to go because the arrangement is very nice and very clear. Okay, there are supermarkets that you, you know, it's very difficult to find, to find uh, the, the products that you actually want. Uh, and this is what I mentioned just now. It's called retail slotting. Manufacturers pay fees to retailers to get the retailers, uh, retailers to display their product at this prominent, you know, uh, what they call positions or locations, eh? checkout counters, or you know, uh, immediately entering the the uh, the, the shop. Eh? Uh, why 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 do you need to pay this because what are the factors because there are limited shelf space okay they do not do you want your product to be at the you know lower shelf of you know the uh, the arrangement lower part of the shelf and not only lower okay if you you know if you go in this way okay go in this way and you go here okay your product is here Display here, and it is at the bottom part of this, you know, uh, shelf. And it's a produce, okay? It's a produce. So what happened? Well, normally, you know, people will not go until the end and, you know, find uh, the, 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 the products, okay? 
So that's why they pay for this slotting, okay, retail slotting. So they have limited shelf space. There is an increasing number of new products that is trying to, you call, um, you know, to, to try to compete, okay? Um, and if, uh, if you have retail slotting, you can have better information about sales through point of sales data collection. Right, you know exactly whether putting at that place will increase sales or not, right? So the manufacturer will actually uh, know whether it is uh, increasing their sales or not. And of course, closer control, closer control of inventory. But today it's all automated. I think uh, you know they have a scan. They they use uh, they use um, barcoding. They use uh, RFIDs. Okay. So retail slotting is a concept where you pay fees, and it's not cheap sometimes. Okay, I do not know how much, but it's it's a, you know it's quite expensive for manufacturers to slot at their prominent space. Okay. Another important area. Okay, this is what we call service capes. Service capes is the design of uh, the the ambient condition. You know ambient condition, the background, the lighting, the sound, the smell. So you go especially to, uh, well, even, even restaurants also, okay? Ambient conditions, spatial layout and functionality uh, involving uh, customer circulation path planning, all characteristics, product grouping, okay? Product grouping. And then signs, the signboards available, the symbols, the artifacts that actually uh, represent the space. You go to shopping malls, okay? Why certain shopping malls are more attractive is because of the service capes, okay? The, you know, the, the surrounding area, okay? Uh, okay, it is important, okay? It is important. So, office layout, retail, and then warehousing and storage layout. So, in warehousing and also storage, we want to optimize the trade-off between handling costs and warehouse space because warehouse space, every cubic, okay, total cube, you want to maximize total cube. That means not only floor area, okay, not only floor area, for example, this is one square foot. You are talking about uh, cubic, eh? cubic area, cubic area cubic area. So stack up and so it's X, Y, Z. <laughs> X, Y, Z. Volume, eh? total cube of the warehouse. Full volume, maintaining low material handling costs. Okay. I've shown you the video of this uh, last week. Okay, that is uh, warehousing and storage layouts. So material handling costs in warehouse, uh, all costs associated with the incoming transport, storage. This is also costly, eh? finding and moving material. You find the material and you move the material. Okay. Um, and outgoing transport, the equipment, the supervision, and depreciation. Okay. Some product will depreciate. How do you know that you use first in, first out? First in, first out. Because in warehouse, you're going to store, you know, uh, your product or your finished product or finished goods or your spares. So the, the first product that, you know, reach and you store, for example, I've uh, got the product on uh, 1st January or 2nd January, 2021. And then there is a new supply coming in March. So you want to use the February, uh, the January 1st. So first in, first out. So how is your handling your finding and moving material, did you find the first in product and not the first out? I mean, not the last in. Eh? Workers, workers, they will do the job easiest. The one at the, they find first, they will take it out. <laughs> you understand? They don't, they don't, unless you have a system of first in, first out. If not, the workers will, find wherever there is and send it out, okay? And also minimize storage and 
uh, damage. Can you see this photo here? Okay, I think I've pasted this. Eh? Can you see the photo here? So this is actually is is in um, Dresden in uh, in um, Germany. Okay, it is a it's a car. You know, this is cars, completed vehicle in Dresden factory in Volkswagen in uh, Germany. This is warehouse for completed vehicle. I mean, they store the the uh, what they call the uh, completed cars. There is information about what what uh, what what car is it what uh, what is the uh, um, model the engine size the color and so on okay so they have a computerized system to actually pick up when there is a need to actually bring it down okay this is height okay if you see here okay so this is called automated storage and retrieval system which can significantly improve warehouse productivity by 500%. The normal way of keeping cars is just on a flat area. Okay. So you, you see here, it's, uh, here it has used uh, the height as well. Huh? So warehouse density tends to vary inversely with the number of different items stored. And AS, ASRS will actually improve warehouse, but of course it's expensive. Huh? The dock location is key design element. Dock location, that means this dock here, the location here. So we need the information of what is in that uh, slot, okay, what is there. So that you can actually, you know, um, uh, retrieve. Retrieve means to take it out when it is needed. Eh? When, you are, when, when there is a sales, then you need to bring down the car can actually bring it down. So this is the concept of cross docking. Cross docking is, so this is cross docking, inbound, outbound. I mean, this came in and this is going to go out. So materials are moved directly from receiving to shipping and not placed in storage in the warehouse. Minimum, okay, minimum, minimum storage if there is a minimum, okay. But of course, it requires very, uh, very good scheduling because you want to know when this arrives, exact time and so on, date from the port, for example, take it from the port or even at the port. Port, we have this cross docking, okay? And you can actually bound it, bound, uh, outbound. Because in this trailer, they may have different kind of, there is, probably there's another truck here, okay? So probably half of this, or some of these will go here, some of it. So they have to break, break actually the, the uh, what they call uh, container content, okay? So that, that's, that's requiring tight scheduling, accurate shipments, barcode or RFID identification for advanced shipment notifications as materials are unloaded. So unload, so you have already where to, to uh, ship it out. Okay, so it's called cross docking, <coughs> right? Uh, it is widely used today. Okay, it's widely used in uh, you know in lot of um, you know handling of uh, material system in place for information exchange and product movement, right? Okay, any questions so far? Uh, so random stocking. Just now, when you see the ASRS, okay, this uh, actually random stocking. It doesn't uh, have, you know, they have to actually arrange to, whenever there is an empty, they just put it, but they have automatic identification system. They know what is in that slot, okay, what is that in that area. So this is much more effective, uh, but you need to have uh, a good information system, okay. Um, and also, it will allow efficient use of space. If not, you know, you know, if it is fixed, uh, you, for example, this slot must always be red color. Must always, that will actually, you know, make it make things inefficient. Okay. So the key things to actually to maintain list of open location and then maintain accurate records and sequence items to minimize minimize travel. Travel means you need to move from one space to another space. Okay. 
So there are costs involved in moving up and finding the what you call a particular location. Okay, so you want to minimize the uh, the total uh, movement for the material handling. Okay, so you second item to minimize travel and peak time. You know, in Amazon.com, when they actually uh, you know prepare packages, so this is similar, similar to you know what is um, random, you know random stocking. They can minimize the travel time to pick up, and uh, then they can combine the picking orders. Okay, and assign classes item to particular areas. Uh, in order for them to, especially uh, more than one item. In that case, it's only one item, it's only car. But in this case, you, know, you have many items. For example, you know, you order through uh, Lazada or eBay for that matter. Okay, So they have random stocking in their uh, warehouses. Okay. Right, right. So, so we have we have seen office layout, retail layout, and then warehousing. Okay, warehousing. So we now move on to uh, fixed position layout. I mentioned already just now. When we say fixed position, what's fixed position? Fixed means the product remains in one place. Fixed. Okay, fixed. And when the product remains in one space, one place, then the workers and the equipment come, come to the site, come to the place. What's this picture? What is this photo? Anyone? Yes, okay. What's that photo? Yuma, what's the photo? You don't know. Okay, Yuma, do you know? This is hospital and... Hospital, correct. Hospital operation in uh, surgery. Surgery, yeah. Okay. So, or maybe is... Uh, you know, so, the patient is the... <laughs> where the, 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 the person, okay? So, the patient is the product. So the workers, all the workers, all the employees come to the site. That means the product to do the operation. So this is fixed position layout. You cannot, uh, what you call, uh, you know, let the product flow. This is, uh, this is a fixed position. So the complicating factors is limited space at the site. Normally, when you talk about uh, fixed position, there is only uh, limited space, but you need to bring all the materials. And there are different materials at different stages of the project. So you need to bring different materials or different assemblies throughout the stages. Okay. And the volume of materials is changing. It's changing. Okay. It's dynamic. Sometimes you need this more, sometimes you need this less, sometimes you need big material. Okay. I think and a good example is actually uh, if I okay. So this is fixed position, meaning. The aircraft is built slowly, bit by bit. Okay, in this case, you know, so all the, you know, the material handling and also all these uh, equipment, the jigs are brought in and it is movable. Okay, it will be able to be, you know, uh, removed. You see up here, there are cranes. These are cranes. Cranes, cranes to, to transport parts and to bring it to the, position in which it is required. For example, you need to bring, you know, this uh, portion, so you carry the crane here and you lower it down, for example, okay? So that's uh, uh, the fixed position. Okay, I'll come, with, come back to this. So this is ASRS, okay? This is actually a repetitive, eh? okay? The automatic storage and retrieval system here, okay? I'll come back to this uh, afterwards. This is not a fixed position. <coughs> so as much as possible, uh, because it's project project based actually, eh? project based. As much as uh, as much of the project as possible is completed off site. Sometimes you need to actually 
bring in the wings and fix it the wing later. Okay, so not everything is fixed there. The assembly is uh, done at the. It's actually actually a final assembly. The other sub components are bring it uh, are done off site. Okay, uh, so that's what the meaning of this. Uh, much of the project as as much of the project as possible is completed off site. Okay, the wings, you know, the fuselage. So this will improve efficiency. Uh, but it is only possible when multiple units are needed to be created. Okay, you have multiple units, then you can actually, uh, you know, do this offsite. Eh? It's uh, it's uh, probably uh, much more efficient and cheaper. Eh? Okay. Okay, process oriented layout is actually you group the machines and equipment together. Similar machine, like means same, same machines and equipment are grouped together. Okay. For example, I, I mentioned just now, like the you know, welding, the grinding, um, you know, are grouped together. Okay. Uh, and flex, flexible, and because it is um, uh, grouped together, this machine equipment are grouped together. That means you can handle a variety of products or services. It is flexible. Okay, it's flexible. So you can make different kind of products using, you know, the uh, different processes that is required and machines. But the difficult thing is scheduling. Uh, so one of the most difficult thing in process oriented layout is actually to do the scheduling and also set up. So it is less, it's not as productive as a repetitive production. Okay, of course, uh, uh, not not as productive and it also incur a higher a higher cost okay so set up material handling and labor costs can be very high can be high in process oriented layout because because every time you need to you know produce a different product you need to have new setups okay you need to set up for this uh, this product for example if you you want to cut uh, a cylinder First, you want to cut a cylinder 10 millimeter. Then a new order comes in, you need to cut 20 millimeter. So you need to set up this cutting machine so that you can cut that size. Okay? And it, it will affect scheduling as well. So that is uh, the difficulty of process oriented layout. Not to say difficulty, okay? It is one of the challenges eh, of uh, process oriented layout. Okay? Uh, a hospital, except for that surgery, that surgery is, is fixed layout. Okay, here inside here is fixed layout. But a patient with a broken leg will have to go to this, uh, you know, try its room, then go to radiology, then probably if needed to go surgery. So the flow of different patients is different. So that's what I mean by process layout. Same as in, you know, workshops, car, car workshop. A car will have a different kind of maintenance. So you will have to do this change. This So this is what you call as, uh, you know, process layout. Okay. I think I've, we have seen this before, right? Process strategy, when you talk about process strategy. Right. So you, in a process layout, you arrange work centers so as to minimize the cost of handling. Okay, there is a method for, it's a little bit of calculation, okay? A little bit of calculation to find the, uh, the cheapest cost of actually um, locating the, um, the departments or the sections. So you want to arrange work centers so as to minimize the cost of material handling. So the basic cost elements are the number of loads moving between centers. I mean, if you produce a certain product, what is the amount of material flowing or moving between centers, between departments? Or in the case of hospital, it's people. And if you look at the distance, okay, that the load travel, okay, that can become, you know, the cost is proportional to the distance. The more the distance they travel, of course, the higher the cost is, okay? So the distance the loads move between centers, can be can be found. So you know you know the number of loads. You can also know the distance. Okay. So this method 
this method of trying to minimize the total cost between work centers or departments. So it's actually you want to minimize the the you know the total cost, which is actually the number of loads moved from department I to department J, and the cost to move from to move a load uh, from uh, department I to department J between I and J between one department and another department I J. Okay, C is the cost, X is the loads number of loads. Of course, I J is the individual departments. Okay. So we only consider two with the flow between two departments. The N is the number of departments or uh, work centers. Right. Um, don't worry about this. Okay, I'm just going to you know make you aware of this. Okay, that you have a simple method of trying to arrange six departments. So I my my task now, I want to know. How to arrange six departments in a factory to minimize material handling costs? There's a very simple, so a simple uh, example. Each department, you know, is uh, assumption is 20 by 20 feet. The building is 60 feet by 40 feet, and we construct a form two matrix. From here, from here, we can actually construct a form two matrix, which actually depend on the load. I will show you after this. And we determine the space requirement and we develop an initial schematic diagram of the departments that we think it is going to be effective. Of course, you can, you can use the relationship diagram which I showed you just now and before. So that relationship diagram can be used. And then after that, you can get this from two uh, matrix as well as the initial diagram. And you determine the cost of this layout then you do improvement because the initial cost is going to be probably not, uh, not minimized. Okay. So you, have, you want to find the minimum cost. And so you try to improve the layout and you prepare the detail plan. Okay, let me just skip this for a while. So what you do is this. Okay. This is the, the data given. So you have six departments, assembly, painting, machine shop, receiving, shipping, testing. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is called the from two chart. From assembly to painting, there is a 50 loads of transport, okay? Transport per, per week. Understand? There is a flow. That means from one to two, 50. And then from one uh, to machine shop is 100. One to receiving, none. Okay, of course, from receiving to shipping is uh, 50. Okay, there is. So this is the from two, the loads per week from one department. So this is I, basically. I is one, I, G, one, two, one, three, one, four. Okay, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. Okay. So when you... Uh, You, you come up with, with an initial, okay? We just simply assume that this is uh, the arrangement of the departments according to our initial plan, okay? Our initial plan. So this is assembly one, two, and three, and four, so forth. And you know just now it's 20 by 20. So this is the arrangement. If I have that arrangement, okay? So I have this uh, interdepartmental flow graph. From one to two, there is a 50 flow. Where do I get that from? From my, uh, from two chart just now, from here. From here, okay? From one to two is 50. One to three is 100. One to four is zero. So I have this interdepartmental flow graph. Why? Because I need to see the intensity, basically. Intensity between, and there are, for example, five to six, there is none. Eh? Okay, there is none. Then I can calculate after this. So using the same formula just now, cost currently, okay, cost currently. Assume that, you know, there is, uh, uh, if you move two distance, okay, there is, uh, but here it doesn't show the distance, okay. 
it will, it will show you, okay, it is center to center, right? If I move from here to here, it is actually one unit of distance. If I move from here to here, it is two unit of distance because center to center. Center to center here is also one unit of distance. Here to here is two unit. Here to here is two unit. Understand? This is two. If you move from assembly to department, it's going to be two plus plus one. Okay. So you get this uh, so-called distance, but I do not know whether they assume to be the same. Okay, Let, let's check three and four. Three and four. Uh, four and five. Four and five. Four and five. It's just one distance. Okay, four and three. Four and three is 20. Okay, four and three. Okay, so it multiply out. You see, it's not 20, but it is 40. Because it is actually 2 times 20. Okay, so this is also 2 times 20. It's not the initial 20 load, okay? So what we do, what we have done is actually to add up all the costs, okay? All the costs that is actually... Currently, we are actually experiencing, or oh, this is the current cost that we are paying, okay? Why, why I need to know the cost so that I can compare. If I move around the department, if I make one department closer to another, can I actually reduce this? Can I actually reduce this 570? Okay. So you can do some improvement and see whether it has actually... Uh, we say this is a revise. So what you did is actually one is no more here, one is here. One, two, three... Four, five, six, only okay. One is moved. Just now, one is here. And you can see, can you see here? Assembly is initially here. So we have moved that. So we're making assembly closer to machine shop. By doing that, we actually can reduce uh, how much? 90. Okay, 90 units of cost. Of course, this is uh, it's just a concept for us to understand that. So instead of instead of assembly department here, we are going to switch to here. That means this is the assembly department, and this is the painting department. By doing that, we have managed to reduce our transportation costs from 570 to 480, okay? But of course, you, you have to do this analysis before you build the factory. Eh? <laughs> you cannot do this analysis after you have built the factory. <laughs> if you have built the factory, then you need to, there are costs of changing this. Eh? But what I'm saying is this, okay? There is a method for us to actually do comparison and see whether our layout is uh, minimizing our transportation costs. Just one thing only, minimize our transportation costs. Okay, I know some of you are uh, analyzing, analyzing process layout. There are six departments. There are six different places, or there can be a hospital. Hospital. This is the X-ray department. This is the uh, you know uh, blood department. This is okay. These are all the departments, and there are fifty people that will go here every week from department one to department two, and department two, one to department three, there will be 100 people or 100 load, frequency 100, okay? And, uh, and these are the, you know, from two, from here, and these are the loads. So these are, this is the existing, uh, the first preliminary arrangement where you arrange according to the sequence one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? What you do is actually you want to uh, calculate the cost for the existing position of departments. So what you do is you add up the the uh, the number of loads multiplied by the cost. C in this case is actually the the distance between one department and another another department. So you'll get, for example, between one and two, it is $50. Between one and three is $200. Uh, 
and then between one and six is uh, forty dollars. Two and three is thirty dollars. Two and four is forty dollars, and so on. We will give you five hundred and seventy dollars for the first arrangement. Okay, first, uh, what you call a um, way of arranging the departments, and you do you did a, 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 you have done a little bit of revision. I mean, you change. They change the department instead of the uh, assembly department on the first one. Okay, so you put it at the center here. Okay, so that will actually reduce the amount of flow between one and three. Okay, um, initially you will have or even two and uh, two and three. Okay, so you find the new cost. So this is the improved cost, revised cost, which is cheaper which is cheaper than the first alternative. So you have a, one alternative. You can change the alternative. You can come up with so many alternatives by rearranging the departments and finding the cost. So you can do so many you know, uh, ways of arranging and you can get the, uh, the cost. This is method. It's a method of trying to find the cheapest uh, material handling at, or transportation cost between the departments. Okay, right. So I asked that the same question. So what is 480? Oh. Uh, I still don't understand why the the. Uh, can you show that show the last pay, last slide? I still, I still don't understand why the assembly one place here could reduce the cost. Um, okay. So why assembly here will reduce the cost, right? Uh, so if you put assembly, okay, it's like this, eh? okay. If you put assembly, if you put assembly beside uh, machine shop, okay? So initially, when you put assembly, Okay, here. If you put assembly away from machine shop here, actually what it has done is actually reduce the cost between assembly and machine shop. One and three. So what happened is currently, so this is one and three, what, how, much, how much flow? One and three. One and three is 100. Okay, one and three is 100. So when you put it bef uh, beside painting, it is two times 100. Okay, because this is 100. But you need to move two units of distance. So you multiply by two, you get 200. But if you put assembly here, you, do you need to travel two? What, what happened? It's only 100 times one. So that's why you reduce, you can reduce the amount of, uh, I mean, flow, basically. Instead of traveling two units, instead of traveling two miles, you travel only one mile. Okay? Because you have, you have put it nearer to the, you know, the high load. High load. 100 is high load. Okay? So instead of moving two, you only move one. Okay? So that's why uh, one and three, yeah. Okay. So one and three is two hundred. Here. I have a question about one and three is one hundred here. See, there's okay. a difference. One and yeah. three is hundred. It's it's uh, fifteen plus fifteen, right? No, it is hundred times two. Uh, I mean, I mean, 50 uh, because it is from assembly to machine shop is 100. From assembly to petty shop is 50. Yes. It is, it is between this and this. Between this and this. It is 100. In the first one, 100 times 2. In the second one, 100 times 1. Okay. Okay. So you have reduced half of the yes, Yuma. Professor, uh, 
I, I want to ask about machine shop and receiving. So machine you, shop and receiving. Okay. You said, you said it takes twenty to cost twenty and twenty. So what? Why two times? Machine shop and uh, receiving. Receiving. Machine shop and receiving. Uh, actually, it should be should be three, right? Machine shop. One, two, three. Yes. Okay. So three times. Twenty. That is between one and. Three and four. Three and so, six. Four. Three, three and four is forty here. 40. Okay. Why is it twenty? Why is it two times twenty? It should be two. Should be three times twenty, right? Because hmm. the distance is actually. Uh, machine shop. Eh, receiving and machine shop is it? Yes. Should be three, should be three. It shouldn't be two. Because it's a center, center and center, okay? Center and center. Probably the probably there is a, there is a mistake from the book. Hmm. Receiving and machine shop three and four. Receiving and machine shop. Okay. Receiving and machine shop. Okay, actually, uh, the cost of moving one load between adjacent department is one. Moving a load between non-adjacent cost two. Okay, it is uh, it has not uh, used the distance. It's given inside here actually. If you look inside this uh, inside the book, it is still multiplied by two because it says here non-adjacent is two dollars. Non-adjacent means uh, non adjacent mean not not anything beyond the next department. Okay, for example, machine to painting is one, but machine to assembly is two, machine to receiving is two, machine to uh, shipping is two, machine to testing is one. So non adjacent means adjacent mean next to next to, but non adjacent anything not not adjacent is two uh, two dollars. Oh. Okay. Thank you. So it's just uh one or two. Yeah, one or two. It's just one or two. It's not three. Not uh you know because there are other methods that actually take into account, you know, this um, movement of uh, center to center. Okay, right. But in, in this case, it's actually one or two. It's either one or two. Okay. Right. Okay, I'm not going to bog you down with this, but you know, it's just an example for it's just tool, okay, for us to do analysis. If you notice that uh, I I always uh, would like you know students to actually have analytical thinking. When I say analytical thinking means we cannot just use a subjective, subjective way of making decisions. Subjective means we just you know use our opinion. We need to have some kind of tool analysis, and a lot of the tools are mathematical. Mathematical, of course, you can use a simple. This is a very simple mathematical analysis so that we can make our decisions. And 
that concept are actually being used into computers. Okay, because I still remember I did my degree. Okay, using craft. Craft is just a simple, you know, arrangement of department, and you just calculate the movement between one. You rearrange, and you come up with a new layout. And you find a cost. Then you find another cost. Find another cost. So you can program this. You can do programming. You can do actually. Uh, total cost is this plus this plus this plus this, right? And then you see the new one. Right? So there is a lot of computer programs today, but uh, you know it's based from that. So these are examples, examples of computer software. There is um, uh, well, Pro Planner and other things. It uses the same concept of finding the movement between one area and another area. Of course, this is for two D. I'm not. You're not using, uh, you know, three three dimensional, but this is four two dimensional. Okay, right. And there are visualizations of, of software. There are many visualization. Of course, today gaming is a visualization. Okay, and it's in in design of layout. There are.